Hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to TWR Facebook Live. So today is the uh, question and answer uh, from the last session. Um, so last session was healing through uh, awareness and precious winds, and we talked about um, so basically, we talk many things, and uh, especially uh, we talked about uh, reflecting in our life for the last three years, uh, how, how our moods has been for the last three years, um, how our pattern of thinking has been for the last three years, and how our emotional patterns has been for the last three years, and and how these one year, two year, three year, our patterns of moods, thoughts, emotion has affected our well-being, our health. So uh, this is what I have uh, asked everybody to reflect during our meditation, and this is what I have asked everybody to also kind of engage in reflecting and practices. So I, when we do that, I'm quite sure we realize a lot of things that probably we realize that, you know, uh, basically uh, how unconscious you might be, uh, how, how unconscious one is, how unaware one is, all these things. That's kind of shocking, right? Basically, if you think, one time I remember at the airport that all the time I have so many airport stories that I missed my flight and uh, and I saw this this older guy maybe in his 70s and he was so mad so mad and his uh, lips were shaking hands were trembling and um, and he was kind of mad at the the, the ticket counter and if it was their fault or something like that was the flight was delayed and so so basically it was like a I was really shocked to see his um, behavior so basically um, I am quite sure quite sure if anybody is conscious that moment he or what she is doing or feeling or thinking or uh, yelling that moment, definitely one will not do that, right? I'm sure you all agree with that. If you, if you uh, are conscious of that moment, you're doing that, you will not do that. So basically, our everyday moods, our everyday thoughts, our everyday emotions, how much space is there to improve or some cases it's not a nice thing to say but how bad it is how bad it is so that uh, how bad it is to if you look at your well-being if you look at your health if you look at your relationship if you look at the, look at your productivity if you look at your success uh, probably it shows in every aspect of your life it shows that it is not so good and it's, but you kind of complain what's not happening to you. You don't think about or you are not trying to be aware of who you are in your mood, thought and emotions and your patterns. We don't think about that. So that's what we really talked about is that when you are conscious of that, it's really shocking. So it is kind of very shocking. So this is what we talked uh, and I will, we, will, we will do another nice session of meditation later so but first i wanted to kind of start with the uh, some of the question and answers uh, uh, questions that people have asked uh, so one there was one question from uh, laura hoffer uh, it says uh, she says that i inherited chronic illness from each of my parents while i under uh, understand that present thoughts mood energy Effect health. These chronic illness seems more connected to karmic winds. Your thoughts. 
So yes, uh, so absolutely. Um, so these uh, inherited chronic chronic illnesses, something that uh, uh, we cannot, I guess, uh, avoid immediately or avoid directly. So something that we inherit, um, but they are definitely uh, connected with the uh, family karmic connections. But but when we talk about karma, it's not always not to look as a negative only. So sometimes you are there may be many many positive things that you have inherited from your parents, um, and so all those are also a karmic karmic connection. So uh, basically, what I'm saying is not look at only when we talk about the karma, not only think about the negative sense, but also look at positive sense. People say, I have a good karma, a good fortune to to meet my teachers, or I have a good karma to have the life what I have. So these are also connect, connected with the karma. But at the same time, I think even something it's, uh, we have inherited, that does not mean that something cannot be changed. Uh, that probably means it's very difficult to change nowadays. Uh, many research findings that almost everything can be changed, right? So even uh, the brain, uh, sizes of brain, the f f formation of brain, cells in brain, uh, cells in our body, uh, you know, like, a, I don't know, like in over 95% of the cells in our body is changing, like basically in, in a way that every single day we are a new person, that everything else, everything is changing in our body, every cell is changing in our body. That, that means that every moment when these cells are changing in our body, um, who changes? Maybe they are deeper karmic conditions or cause conditions which are changing our cells one direction or another direction. But whenever our awareness kicks in in those moment of transition or changes, our awareness either stops, like for example, if it's a disease causing wind is uh, blowing, if the disease causing karmic inherited from parents are moving or past karma is moving, those cells are moving, that means when you are aware of it, maybe it stops that moment. When you are truly a strong aware of it, a stable awareness is there, maybe it begin to reverse, or maybe it begin to uh, d delete some of those, of those kind of negative uh, disease-causing winds, for example. So what I'm saying here is even something that we inherit things, I don't think not, not, it does not mean that it's not possible to change. What it means, it's probably very difficult to change, probably almost impossible to change, but there's always a chance. And um, so, so that I think is the first question. And the second question is, Hell, uh, Christina. So she talked about um, basically, I listen and cooking at the same time. Um, so she's talking about so does food basically uh, does food and the space effects um, what do you think about the food and the space we live in their energy so basically I think um, food for example I think is really really important you know um, obviously there's no question about what do you what do you eat uh, what kind of quality of food you eat, uh, how you eat, uh, and how, what amount you eat. Uh, it's definitely, there are a lot of uh, people talking a lot of, about this mindful eating. Eat, eat, uh, yeah, yeah, so basically, just, just let's talk about a few simple things. There is each, each, in each one of us, there is a hungry ghost. Each, in each one of us, there is a hungry ghost, so that very much um, 
hunger to feel complete, hunger to feel full, hunger to feel uh, joy, happy. And uh, when we feel hunger to be complete, we translate that into something when we cannot feel complete by uh, being who we are, by having realization. And then we're trying to substitute that with something else, like a substance, like a food. So when then we're trying to do is we say, I'm hunger, I'm, I wanted to be happy, so I wanted to eat more. I wanted to be happy, I wanted to drink more. Uh, and so, so basically, we have this sense of hungry ghost in us. And when, we, when you are coming from that place of hungry ghost, when you are eating with that hungry ghost, you definitely, there is no awareness. You eat so much more, you eat so fast, you, you eat with no awareness, no sense of joy, uh, uh, how you say, a sense of uh, appreciation. Uh, so all those, these beautiful qualities are not there. Um, when you are aware of your food, then there is more chances or there is a, of choices that you make. More, you have more choices or preferences uh, with that inner strength that you are able to make. But then even sometimes you eat something, um, you know, maybe let's, let's talk about the glass of wine, for example. For sure, uh, if, you, if you don't drink, don't drink. But if you're drinking, then maybe if you drink, drinking less or, or drinking as a form of celebration, as a form of a practice, and in a when we do like a tsok puja or gana puja or something like that, you have a a, a a a sip or you have a glass that, but that involves so much a sense of appreciation, um, celebration, gratitude, awareness, and enjoyment. There's so much. Every sip is so much celebration there so much joy there that is very different than it is about a joke then i i heard a joke that saying in, in the bar somebody order a drink and says do you want a red wine or white wine and the answer was mucho so the mucho means a lot so you know if you that is the answer in mucho is hungry goes so sense some sense of like a, when hungry goes is there um, there is no control, there is no awareness. So I think uh, definitely um, a sense of uh, being aware of that hungry ghost, basically, or oh, being aware of that hungry ghost and allowing hungry ghosts to rest, allowing a hungry ghost to understand and allowing awareness to arise to make a better move decision that moment. So I think um, in sense that food is very important and the space is also very important. Um, generally, like in, I talk, uh, I give one example of space will be in Tibetan tradition, every, regardless of how expensive, how house uh, expensive or how cheap or how fancy or how simple house is in every single household there is a room dedicated to call shrine room because uh, because that space is the space where you go to when you need to rest when you need to be protect protected when you need to to find some answers, when you need to, to connect with the enlightened beings, when you, to, when you need to, to feel peace, when you need to, to recover, practice, there is that sacred space. Every single household, regardless of how fancy or simple house is, there is that space. And I always tell this story, one of my Western students, she, she's making this incredible fancy house, and she had place her shrine room in her fancy bathroom. So I was, when I saw that, I was totally shocked. But of course, I did not say anything. I did not want to judge or hurt. But internally, I felt like a incredible, so much space there, 
but the shrine ended up in the bathroom. And uh, but she said reason why she did in the bathroom was because there was a privacy. But in that big house, I think there is a one can create a lot of other better private spaces. So I think um, it's really important uh, to understand the sacred space in your house, to understand the sacred space within yourself. So whenever you are at in home, you can always go to that place. When whenever you are traveling, you can go in that place within yourself, that sacred protected space. So I uh, definitely feel like it's very important to to uh, understand of the space is very important. And then um, there is a question about from Lisa Risingberry. Um, I have a question. There are specific practices for each precious winds room to balance each of them, or will the Tsalung uh, Tsalung balance all of them? Uh, which, which basically means all the uh, usual five Tsalung exercise will balance all of them. So it's it's really really incredible amount of knowledge of so-called wind lung uh, in ancient tradition tibetan tradition i i know also also like indian tradition also like in the chinese tradition hold the notion and the knowledge about chi all the notion and the knowledge about the prana and all the understanding of the wind or lung in tibetan tradition uh, from the, from the perspective of medical knowledge medical from medical point of view from tibetan medicine and the, from the point of view of like a tantra like uh, all the practices of energy and even also the practices from the dzogchen uh, the tradition of great perfection uh, understanding of wind for example uh, and it's, it's very very like a uh, it's very complex so very very complex so so five talon are designed to uh, activate and reconnect with like a uh, five elemental uh, winds and uh, so these when we talk about the nine winds basically uh, there is it does not necessarily means nine wind not look at only negative or positive one way or the other way but each time when you talk about the karmic wind it could be have a car positive karmic wind you can have a negative karmic wind when you th talk about the uh, um, the winds of thoughts of uh, winds of thoughts and conceptual mind not necessarily means bad so it means if you have a, a positive thought positive winds are moving if you have a negative thought negative uh, negative winds are moving so it's not like a uh, one one or the other i think the most important part is the being aware of it uh, most important part is being aware of every single day uh, Let's talk about one specific case here, right? So uh, let's think about right this very moment. Right this very moment. And each one of you look at yourself. So we are like here right now, Facebook Live, about 143 people uh, present. So, uh, oh, sorry, the 246 people are present here. So all of you, think about it. You just... In one instant, you look back to yourself right now. Be very honest. Be very brave. And trust. And look at yourself. What is your mood? If you, if there was a, a glasses in front of you, how would your how would your face would look like? Is there a space for improvement? Is there a little smile there? Is there a little joy there? A little curiosity, a little alertness, a little sense of connection. What kind of thoughts you are? Are you are you are truly present here this moment listening to me? Or you are half listening to me and half you are thinking whatever you are thinking. If you are thinking, then question is, 
what kind of thoughts you have. A thought that you want to have or thought you are forced to have. A thought is a new or thought is an old pattern that every important moment in your life you keep on thinking those kind of thoughts. Is that your pattern? What kind of emotion you are having? Are you feeling very open, feeling some sense of trust here, or feeling some sense of connection here, feeling some sense of presence here, or you are judging the moment, or you are judging me? It's okay to judge me, that's not the point. You can judge absolutely, no problem with judging me. It's not about me who is object of judgment in this case, it's about you, the subject who will always judge someone all the time and that that sense of lack of trust and connection every given pressure every precious moment in your life that the pattern you are in that can we aware of these things in that every any given moment can we aware of these things if there is a genuine sense of trust braving braveness and able to reflect and able to see, then only, only opportunity to change, then the only, only possibility to change. But if not, the change will be impossible, change will be difficult. Because change only happens when you're conscious of something, when you're aware of something. A positive change probably never happens when you are not conscious. No matter how difficult situation is, can always shift some level when there is a conscious, when there is awareness. It might not be the level of shift that you wish or you expect but there will be always a shift in those moments and it will, be, it will be like a preparation for the next step to be a better, better accommodating that awareness. So this is a good example. So if you reflect this very moment in your life, then you will definitely, you will see what's happening or what's not happening. So, so that is the, I think it's a very important part that we, a uh, few question and answer, but I think uh, some of these question and answer will make um, sense back and forth. So once again, I wanted to, before we do a short session of practice here, I wanted to review uh, for all of you, and not only during this session, I would like you to reflect throughout the day, may throughout the maybe week, that how last one year, two year, three year, your mood, average your mood, um, average your uh, pattern of thinking, uh, average your uh, state of emotion, and how the consequences of those, how is it affecting your well, overall well-being, particularly well-being of your health, a question. So that's the question. And, and being a little bit more, more honestly trying to reflect and honestly trying to be aware and with that power of the, those awareness trying to make uh, some significant uh, dramatic uh, radical changes in your patterns uh, for next three years or maybe next one year or next next month or this or next week this coming week or today or tomorrow and this is what I would like all of you seriously think as you continuously engage with this uh, uh, regular basis on a li Facebook Live with me. Uh, these are very, very practical um, uh, advices I want everybody to engage with. Now, as now for the practice session, what we're going to do, we will do the uh, nine breathing of purification. So, um, I am sure uh, uh, that most of you know one form and another form. I'm not going to go into the explaining that, and if maybe not, uh, maybe Mariela, um, uh, our uh, chart host here, maybe.
can find uh, add the nine breathing or purification explanation afterward if not now maybe afterward then you can come back to this recorded site to look at the nine breathing uh, explanation and you can do that maybe we might have some link too so you can uh, find that and then uh, if if you wanted to keep it more simple then you can only do like a just like a five or seven times deep breathing and so not only just deep breathing but the two specific unique quality when you exhale release any discomfort and tensions that you feel and when you inhale you're trying to inhale vital energy so that uh, has a power to clear yourself in this moment second part of practice we will do is uh, basically we we can call that the resting of three doors resting of three doors resting your body through the stillness resting of your speech through the silence resting your mind through the spaciousness we'll do that third uh, i will guide it but i will just kind of go through these five points third will be uh, after you rested well just again self reflecting and the self reflecting will be that um, uh, it's very important that seeing how much uh, time that you are wasting by doing things for last one two three years the way the pattern of mood thought emotions negative sense how how much uh, you are wasting time it's important to kind of realize clearly uh, that it's i mean you really realize clearly is really like a shocking and then there is no way not to change it so how how much you drain how much you waste time and how meaningless that is and uh, not only that but how harmful uh, it has been if you look at certain conditions of your well-being your health how harmful that has been probably you clearly eye opening you recognize and you don't want to to become make become it become more harmful than it is already so uh, so that's number 3 and the number 4 it's very important one is that uh, what i would call here is the um the ultimate and uh, conven- ultimate or com- conventional compassion so uh, it's is a compassion to yourself self compassion so in this practice uh, what we will do is just basically trying to ultimate compassion in a sense we will trying to simply Uh, be aware and presence with that mood with that thought with that emotion with that pain whatever this experience that you are frequently having uh, just being presence not elaborating judging changing anything that is more like a it's also a compassion uh, it's also uh, but is a no, non conventional compassion because it's like a not not like emotionally creating anything so there will be a choice one if that is a little difficult to do or you feel you prefer to do more like a, a conventional sense of compassion the conventional sense of compassion is where like a really like if somebody in the street there is accident and somebody have cut their arm because of accident when you see that bloods and uh, images like that what do you immediately feel you feel immediately sense of may this person be free from the suffering how i can help and then maybe if you are able to maybe you're holding that person like giving this really sense of deep caring uh, attention connecting attention with a kindness and warmth so that kind of warmth giving towards somebody but this is that kind of uh, warmth and caring giving toward yourself like a self compassion so uh, ultimate sense of compassion by being present with those experiences or being more caring loving uh, emotional sense of compassion to your pain or your uh, challenge or your thought or who is feeling helpless in this moment so that will be number 4 um and the last one will be a dedication a dedication is something that 
you uh, whatever I accumulate merit out of these practices, may these merit uh, become cause for a self-transformation or self-realization of all the sentient beings and particularly those who you know this moment in your life who need those prayers, uh, bringing those people in your meditation and prayer, all those loved ones and friends and people you know. So that is the main thing what we will try to do here. Okay, so just uh, for a moment be ready. So five deep breathing, part one, and or nine breathings. As a result of the nine breathing or purifications or your deep uh, healing breathings, feel more clearing, more opening. And also feel this sense of connected to the sacred cyber sangha all around the world. Expand that sense of space from your body, from your room, to out as, as far as you can, infinite space, to all the sangha members. Feel connected, feel supporting each other. Send support, receive support. Second part of the practice, the resting through three doors. Bring your full attention to your body. Be aware of that stillness in your body.
Be aware of the silence around within you. Be aware of the spaciousness, sense of openness around and within you. And continuously breathe deep, continuously feel connected and sup being supported. Rest deeper in that stillness, rest deeper in that silence, rest deeper into that spaciousness by during every ex deep exhalation, rest deeper, deeper, connect deeper. Now for a moment, part four, for a moment, so the part three, just reflect for a moment that last three year or two year or last one year or for last couple of months, your mood, your, with your thoughts, your emotions, all the efforts how much it's draining you how much a waste of time it is how meaningless those are how unconscious you have you have been Here is to be aware, but not judge. Recognition, realization. And willingness, feeling the strength and power to change. Not only how wasteful, how wasted your time, but also, most importantly, how harmful it can be, or it has been, or you are experiencing it. Recognize, recognize a deep, true recognition. Harmful. not able to function well, not able to have lack of productivity, creativity, affecting your well-being, affecting your health, and particularly if your health is not good, it's, it's really harmful to think that way. Recognize, be conscious, be aware. And says some sense, be aware that you truly wanting to change that. I truly wanted to change that 
please give me the strength, give me the power, give me the confidence, give me support, all the enlightened beings. Where whatever, whoever, wherever your sources of trust is, feel that trust. Feel the trust in the sacred cyber sangha. We are all here, connected to each other. Send that, send that sense of good vibration to others. Feel that sense of good vibration from others. A support. Part 4 So whatever that wind is, or that pain, challenge, hopelessness, helplessness, whatever you are feeling, particularly those feel those who are feeling like a little bit like a lack of power lack of energy to feel the strength to change have compassion to yourself a self compassion first Trying to be present with that feeling without judging. Second, trying to feel, give spacious, luminous, warm hug to yourself. To that self who is feeling weak, who is feeling pain, who is feeling not strong enough to make fast changes or the changes that you wish you want. Have compassion to that. So for a moment, spacious, luminous, warm hug, kind hug, caring hug to yourself. Just continue that in that presence of luminous hug to yourself, self-compassion. Now, just for a moment, imagine this sense of self-compassion in that resting through the three doors. If this was your average mood, if this was your way of pattern of thinking, if this was a way of your feeling, a way of your being, imagine 
incredible change that will change a lot of things in your life. Okay, so the last thing, the point five is dedication. So just basically, uh, you're welcome to, you know, give me your feedback, uh, specifically these five points of meditation, what we just did. Uh, give me feedback, how you're feeling, uh, how, you're, how you are experiencing with your reflect, reflecting, uh, reflecting your last couple of years, um, what, you, what you realize, and um, how, how clearly you recognize that waste of time, energy, meaningless, but not only harmful or oh, has it has it um, uh, it, it has been harmful for you or, or or do you recognize how is your experience how clearly you feel confidence that need and want to change truly truly strong sense of need and wanting to change how clearly that is how strong that is and uh, and of course a beautiful, uh, spacious, luminous, warm hug. It's a beautiful a metaphor, beautiful experience. And uh, how do you feel that sense of experience of that? And then uh, finally. Uh, of course, the dedication is very important. So, we have dedication. So, give me some feedback here. How 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 you experience here? So, how was it? So somebody says, I know exactly what I wanted to change. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's exactly what I want you to know. Thank you. Martha, thank you. Sherry Davis. So, thank you for all your uh, wonderful um, feedback. And uh, your wonderful your experiences. So we will. I hope that you uh, continuously uh, apply these five points, five practices, and particularly there are a number of. Uh, specific things to clearly realize. I think that important things that real, uh, realize through deep reflection. So that's very important. So I wanted to uh, conclude today. Um, so the next one, uh, next TWR Facebook Live we will uh, do next Tuesday uh, from Dharamsala, India. Uh, I am today uh, here in California, so it's a, a long trip, long traveling, but uh, I'm even not exactly sure what the times, the differences are, but I, as I commit, committed, I will be with all of you regardless of the time, uh, unless the internet connections are not good, that will be more challenging, but I will be there with all of you. And uh, so, thank you very much. Bye.